This conference will now be. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, sorry for the disconnect. Uh, now the recording issue is sorted out. We can start our session. I think uh, two more or two minutes to join. Some issue in the network. And are you gonna go ahead and still uh, put those recording, not recorded, but PBT for the uh, Azure part and the questions that you mentioned on the last session? Yes, yes, I'll be doing it. As usual, I'll send you the PDF case. Like, okay. I'm consolidating that and I'll be okay. sharing that for your preparation. And are Thank you planning you. for the exam? Yeah, yeah, I've been studying. Uh, um, yeah, so hope to take it by the end of the month for sure. That's that's my goal. Fine, fine. Sure. Uh give me a day time. Uh so I'll consult it and I'll send you that so you can start working on it. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. No, that's fine. I got some other stuff on the study. So that's fine. Yes. Yeah. And do you just a side note, do you think that it'd be best to do the the nine hundred and then do the one oh four? right right behind it? I was thinking so. Yeah. Just give me a minute. Uh, I'm getting a call. Just give me a minute. Okay. Yes, yeah, sorry, kid. Please go ahead. What was the question? I, I was just saying, do you think it'd be better to do the 900 and then do the 104? Because I was going to do the 900 and then do the Azure, but I think I'm going to, I mean, uh, the, the 900 of Azure and then go to AWS, but I think that I'm going to do the 900 and the 104 on the Azure side before I go to the AWS. Sure, sure. Fine. Yeah. And I'll give you a link also, kid, like uh, the comparison of your AWS and Azure services. Okay. So that uh, this uh, there are some of the things you can, it'll be easy for you if you know the services okay. of uh, okay. uh, Azure and AWS. Yeah. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, I think. Yeah. So let's start our session. So today would be the day one of the DevOps, and in that, like, we are going to discuss about the DevOps uh, concept. Uh, what is DevOps? Why we need DevOps? And uh, then we will jump into the Azure DevOps concept. So as usual thing, because why we are discussing these topics is uh, this knowledge is needed when you are going to perform as a DevOps engineer in your real time world. That's why I always have the practice of explaining the background about each and every topic. Then we will jump on to the actual uh, concept. OK. So first, what is DevOps? So I want to quickly give some story thing related to this. Few years back, what happened is like there is separate team for each and every module. There will be a group of people who do only the development activity. There will be a group of people who will do a testing and there is a support team. So whenever a developer develops his own task, he will put everything together and he will compile the code in his local and he will uh, commit the code and this uh, common repository after committing the code in the common repository you know you will have the package whatever may be the programming language okay it can be a java or it can be the dotnet any programming language or any technology what will happen is they used to compile everything and they create a package then that's it the developer role is over any issue which happens in my local any compilation error anything happened till that point only they'll know if you go and ask the developer hey what happened to your deliverable is it completed is it available in the production is it working fine so what the developer will do is unless and until they get a escalation email they may not know whether it is deployed in the actual environment whether it is working or what is the performance, they have no clue on that. So they were working in a 
a layered structure like this i am a developer i'll be working only on the development activity so i don't know what is happening beyond that so i have a scope defined so i'll be working on that the same thing on the support team also so what the support team will do is they will have the steps defined that is if i get a package step one i'll copy the package from this path to the other path step two i'll extract the file step three i'll run this command step four if it works fine well and good if it is not working fine i'll send a mail to the development team so they will finish to that point then there will be another set of people who will do the testing so what they will do is if they get an email that is either from the production support team or every application will have some application owner if they come to know that it is available they will come and test sometimes they may not even know whether the new change is available or not there are some cases i have seen they tested the whole chain and reported that nothing is available because there was no proper communication between these teams and they don't want to cross their boundaries also developer will do development alone support team will do only the infra aspect testing team will do only the testing related things if you tell me to test i will test it if there is any error i will report to you if there is no error that's a happy path so this is how things were there because of this what has happened is even a small change for example you are opening one uh, e-commerce website so when you are opening this e-commerce website there is one small change they want within the site for example uh, there are like feedbacks nowadays people are giving right like you get a product and for the product you are giving the review so far you are giving the reviews in the case of only stars like five star ratings you are giving so the requirement is have some text also at least few lines about the product needs to be added in the review so that is a requirement from the client for example to add a small text area it will take three months of time why because we were working in a model that is development team was working separately they have their own backlogs their regular cycles and all and once they complete then we have to check for the dependency on the infra team because infra team is not the one who meant only for your project they will be across different projects their bandwidth is a matter their availability is a matter if they are going on any vacation or any holidays and all everything they will consider then they will come up with a plan that we will have release for every three months so totally in a year you will have only four times that you can push your code to the production so what has happened is it is not giving a good customer satisfaction because a customer is expecting a new feature if you are a good application then what is the expectation from the customer your e-commerce site should take the feedback immediately and whatever customer is in need they should get it immediately if a customer has to wait for three months of time for a small change there are a lot of competitors in the market they will go and use that particular competitor so because of this it created a lot of challenge in the business area though everybody is technically sound they can do wonders in the development they can do wonders in the infrastructure but when they log into this particular format it created a lot of lag in the deliverable process then only the new era came into picture which is called devops so there is no boundary like a developer should do only the development activity the operation or the support team will do only the operation related activities so both the teams combine together and they form something called devops initially when they brought in this concept there was a fear in the market that is many of the people consider that they will lose jobs they were in a misunderstanding like a lot of talks were there this i'm talking maybe uh, a decade back okay everyone was talking about this devops devops and they started telling that devops has come so what will happen is there won't be any operation team at all because developer itself will do everything once everything is automated the operation team or the support team don't have any area that was an understanding a misunderstanding i would say that has happened so over a period of time we came to know that there is no loss of job for a developer there is no job opportunity loss in the term of infrastructure person also because if you go and look into the job portals now just go and randomly search anything related to infrastructure still there are a lot of openings related to the infrastructure admins 
the devops engineers are needed the developers are also needed so there is an equal weightage i see so whatever the myth people add in the beginning that the role of the infrastructure person the operation team itself will be over there won't be any such role going forward that was the understanding but now it's all remote so now what is happening the engineer the devops engineer is a developer or a infrastructure admin so the person can be from any of the side it's not like i would say only one side a developer or infrastructure admin who is the sme in working with three things you have to keep it in mind devops means it is not only the technology related aspect it is a process you are going to follow it is the product you are going to deliver by collaborating with people so as a devops engineer it's not like i am i have to be uh, good in coding i have to be good in scripting no you should be good in the understanding the process and collaborating with people also because you have to be the middleman and you will be connecting with different people so as i told you sometimes you will be functioning as a like you will be working with architects you will be working with a developer you will be working with a tester or you will be working with any other third party tools smes also so you need to collaborate and finally what you have to do you have to deliver the product that is the expectation so all the expectation from a devops engineer is nothing but you have to deliver the product or the whatever you are doing right the task on time as early as possible that is also the next thing by as early as possible is we are into the agile methodology now so we have a sprint cycle so everybody i believe uh, from the it uh, background only so you know the concepts of agile and all if not in your in the upcoming sessions i'll be explaining you uh, when i was explaining the boards azure boards and all we have to discuss this agile process i'll, I'll do a deep dive so in the agile process what has happened is you have to bring things together in a time frame and again you don't need to really wait for the 3 months of time 6 months of time just take an example that you have to design one website that is a task provided to you so you will say that this complete program that is i have to build the ui the front end the back end i have to uh, build develop i have to deploy in a infrastructure so infrastructure I have to prepare database is needed so i have to build the database so once i put everything in place after deployment somebody has to test it in terms of functional non functional also that is performance security data aspect all the testing needs to be done then some automation needs to be done so this overall process will take at least a year in most of the new modernization program but we cannot wait for one year of time then only we'll come to the broad uh, format call mvp minimum viable product that is you have to show some working model any one piece at least see i have a website i know but at least for every two weeks or three weeks of time i need to show some working model so first sprint what i can do i can show one login page alone a empty website can be there so you can show something like login page i completed reset password i completed forget password i completed so every one or two weeks of time you have to show some product that is working model you have to show it is not like something a placeholder you will be creating some working model you will do so that is the need of the r because everybody is running towards a digital formats clouds and other thing so the agile methodology help us to do it so the devops this agile all these digital things brings the quick to market so you can bring your product as early as possible because it is a competitive world right nobody is ready to wait for one year to show some business output so if you can keep on show some progress then your business will understand that yes you are in line sooner or later we will get what is the required thing so as a devops engineer the responsibilities for the role is designing implementing the strategy for collaboration in terms of my code infrastructure source control security compliance ci testing delivery monitoring feedback so many things you will be doing but don't worry you are not going to do everything manually it's all automated again you are not the one who is going to fully automate this 
there are different devops tools available in the market there are different devops providers like supporting services are available they are going to travel along with you azure devops is one among them not only the azure so when i started using devops i started with the on premises devops only those days it was that at a beginning stage of a devops so that time we all started with the on premises that time it was very difficult because it is not that single place i'll get everything for a building pipeline i need to use one tool and for my defect management i have to use one tool my code management i have to use one tool my package management i have to use one tool and for my documentation i have to use one tool so lot of different tools were there there were some open source tools there are some licensed tools so we have to do lot of follow up finally we have to bring everything into a bucket and say that hey the devops is ready so what is the model we are expecting we brought it but it need lot of collaboration on those days now it became very handy after the azure devops or the other cloud provider devops and all because they are bringing all the tools whatever i told right in the complete cycle everything in the single umbrella itself i don't need to log into different different portals different different uh, ids and all i have to remember no nothing like that if i have to do all these things i can do it in a single portal url itself which is called my azure devops so other uh, cloud providers are also providing but we are going to do a deep dive on the azure devops because this is the famous thing in the market nowadays because of the added features collaborations as i told you how much you are providing the user friendly experience that much you will get the user right so azure is investing lot of things on improving the user friendly uh, area that is every time when you feel that hey it will be good right if you have this feature then in near future you will get it immediately so that is the reason it has been famous in the market so this devops it's work as an like cross functional team so both on this development and the administration side will be doing so you should be familiar with this like if you are planning for a certification and all there are some concept you should be familiarized and one important thing i always tell all the students of this devops is you should be comfortable with any of this area so that it will be easy for you when you start working on the devops model that is either on a development side or on the administration side so it will be easy for you so we can very well become master in the devops coming back to the az 400 so there are the basic skills uh, will be measured in terms of the process and communication as i told you devops means is not only the ci cd pipeline in my demo also i mentioned it it is not only the ci cd pipeline you will be understanding the process also so the communication and process so there is a weightage of 10 to 15 percentage in this particular topic and uh, my source control how to design and implement 15 to 20 percentage and the pipelines there are two pipelines we will be working on one is the ci the continuous integration which is my build pipeline and another one is my cd the release pipeline in that area you will have 40 to 45 percent weightage wise it is more this particular ci cd pipeline but you have to concentrate on the other areas also then the security and compliance plan and the instrumentation strategy like what are the strategies and in all you will be using as as a devops engineer those and all it's needed to appear for your az 400 so what are all the topics we are going to discuss in them course in this uh, 20 plus hours it is related to this topics which is asked here like in terms of the skills measured here so apart from that i'll be covering few topics because certification perspective the expectation is lesser i would say but when you have to place yourself as a devops engineer you have to prove yourself in other areas also so i am seeing the real ground right so i know from my teammates like from my reportees and all what I'm expecting. So I have some set of requirements for them. They should be comfortable with the infrastructure as the code because that is the main like automation is the mantra we are using. So obviously they have to go with this like infrastructure as the code. And there are some additional day to day errors we will get it. The problems, the challenges we get and the solution we have to apply. So in this courses, 
I'll be discussing that also. It is not like always a happy path. It is not like always when I click on the submit button, it will show a success message. No, I will get an error. So that also we'll be discussing. You will face this challenge. You will get a requirement. You will have a problem statement like this. There is a solution like this. So that is how we are going to discuss. But predominantly, we will cover the topics for the AC400 also. Apart from that, there are some basic or the required areas are there that we will be discussing in this journey. Okay. So it is that development and operation include the agile planning, CI, CD and monitoring of my application. So let me give a quick overview about this, the DevOps flow. This is how we work. DevOps means this picture would have seen in multiple places because the same concept we are using, right? So in most of the places, if you see the uh, DevOps, this is what they will see. So why I'm insisting is there are some questions. If you are the person who is looking for a certification, there are some uh, questions will come related to the theoretical aspect. That's why I'm giving importance to this i purposely skipped a few of the topics uh the theoretical topics in the first few days because uh, uh, i don't want to uh, talk a lot on the theoretical aspect in the first few days itself like slowly i my uh, um, recommendation is daily two three topics later to theoretical we'll discuss then we will see the actual demo so that you will be comfortable with the preparation also okay so the first thing is Let's see, uh, consider that how we do in the real time. So you, you are in an organization, you are doing some uh, uh, work in an IT organization. Let's consider like that. You are not playing any role currently. So uh, because every stage there will be a different role. So in an, my example, currently you don't have any role assigned. You are in the IT field. That's it. In an organization, you are working. So what is happening is, they are coming with a new approach that is in your organization they are planning to start one new application the application can be anything the e-commerce website okay or any other gaming app or any other voting system anything live streaming social media kind of thing so some website your company is going to introduce in the market so the first stage would be your planning so you will plan, let's take the e-commerce website itself. So you will plan what and all information I need. So it, it's not like always the standard format, right? I want to be unique in the market. So my e-commerce website should be unique in the market. So I have to bring in some new ideas and all, some new features and all. Because already some people are uh, famous in the market. If I have to be in the market, I should bring in some new feature. So I have to plan what and all I need. So overall picture I will have. So for this complete website to complete, I need at least one year of time. In this one year, this is the roadmap for the 12 months. First month, I'll be completing this. Second month, I'll be completing this. Third month, four months. So I will have a complete plan and I'll have a breakup also. I will have a team structure also. How many developers, how many testers, how many SIT testers, UAT testers. So different stages I'll be having. I will have a clear plan about my requirement and my execution. Okay. Once the planning is done, I will be building the website. Building in the website in the sense, I will be starting my development. So I will start like if I'm choosing .NET or if I'm choosing a, a Java, I will start my development and all. So based upon the plan, I started my development. Development is completed. Once my development is completed, what I have to do? I have to go with the integration process. That is, I develop the code, but the dev code should be somewhere available for the testers to test it, right? So in my local, in my editor, for example, I'm using a Visual Studio Code editor. In my Visual Studio Code, that code, that uh, working model is there means, what is the use? It should be available in some IP address or with some domain name, right? So if you type google.com, then only you are getting some result, right? If the google.com developer is having all his code in his local environment, what is the use? How everybody can access it? He has to deploy the code in some place. Then only we can operate that. We can use it. So google.com, now it is available publicly. So now you are going and using for the search purpose. Search engine option is available. So you will build it. You will do the integration. You will do the deployment. Then 
you will operate it you will use that particular website then obviously it is not going to be a success there can be a success but there would be a suggestion also if it is failure also you will get a feedback hey this is not working if it is success also they will give some improvement feedbacks that is it is good but if you have this feature also it is good so you will get mixed feedback so you will collect all the feedbacks once you collect the feedback what it will do again you will plan that is already i have these many things in my list for the whole year i have some list so first month i delivered something that itself is having some problem so they came it came back to me or first month i delivered something and that is success but there are some feedback from the customer which i have to add it into my website so you will again plan your list that is what and all i have to do in the next cycle what and all i can postpone it so you have to prioritize your things which needs to be delivered immediately which needs to be done later time so once the planning is done then again the same cycle will go so this is the devops loop it will be a continuous process it is not like one time effect that is the reason the devops engineer role is famous in the market so it is not like you will be working for only 3 months or 6 months in a project it is will be a continuous process even on the maintenance phases your application is fully done also even during the maintenance phases you have an opportunity because if they have to improve the environment they have to improve the application areas and all means obviously you will be working on the devops model so let me take a break here and show you the portal screen because we have talked a lot on this uh, uh, theoretical aspect right let's see some of the screens like what you will be seeing in the devops set also let's consider today so let me quickly share my uh, browser so in the next 20 days we will be working on this screen this is my um, azure uh, portal screen so here only all the infrastructure related things and all we will have but predominantly we will work in the other screen also which is called my devops let's see that too so on top when you type it you will have this option called azure devops so this is the portal we are going to do all your azure devops related or things that is i will have two portals one is azure portal which is only for the infrastructure aspect azure infrastructure that is people who are is doing this az900 the az104 and um, this uh, architecture one or any data engineer or certification security that az500 related things all these things would be done in the area of the previous portal which i was showing that is my azure portal the url to log in that is you can go to the google page and uh, azure portal login this would be your login page for the azure portal okay so here only you will sign it so portal.azure.com is the one you will log in the devops portal is a one that's having a separate url okay so this is my azure devops services so two different things so if you don't have a, a subscription okay you don't have the user id and password means for the azure portal you have to sign in and uh, once you sign in that is again start for free in azure portal you will have like 30 days trial period you will be using right so once you have the azure portal access like this is how your screen was looking like so this is my azure portal screen you can see portal.azure.com this is the home page of my azure portal so from this portal i can very well navigate to my azure devops things so for devops specifically i have a website so that i am going to access how to go to the website like in the top most search bar option we can type the devops and you will have a option called azure devops organization you can click on it so this is the landing page okay if you have a uh, subscription like me if in case you don't have subscription means you can go to the google you can type azure uh, devops the login then the url will be available so you have to click on the sign in 
if you have the user id and password otherwise you can try for the free okay so you can start it again it is the same thing the azure portal screen only so you have to have the subscription of azure then you can use a azure devops also so the azure subscription uh, will have like a, a 30 days of trial and or like you can use it for 30 days or there whenever you log in they will give the 200 uh, credit points right that we can use whichever is ending uh, early then your subscription will be over then you will go to the pay as you go so once i have the subscription in place you will click on this and this is my landing page currently if you look at this i don't have anything this is the empty project nothing is available so what you have to do is for your work to start with you have to create something called organization so this hierarchy would be like this you should have an organization under that that you can have multiple projects a project can be a public project or a private project so under the project you will have teams this is a hierarchy so i'll be explaining that in the upcoming slides so to have an understanding like what we will be doing I'm quickly taking you into the screen so that you will have an idea. Like if I keep on talking in a theoretical aspect, you won't get a complete information. So I, I will quickly create one organization. So anyhow, I'll do a step-by-step -step progress on the next sessions and all. So I am creating one organization by using this button. Like it is asking me that you want to start with this. Yes, I want to start. You have You can give the name okay you can name your organization and um, you can check like which area you want to host it and uh, let type the characters so the organization will be created once you create your organization, once you create your project, then your work will be straightforward to the DevOps. Like you will have all the DevOps features and you can start working on your um, project. So quickly, I am creating one uh, private project now. Okay. So one demo pro project I am creating. But anyhow, I will be explaining you about each and everything under organization so this is just a quick review so i am clicking on a project because i want to show you what are the services we are going to learn as part of this azure devops that's why i am clicking on all these things so the project is created so this is your azure devops screen this is the place you will be working so if you go to an organization obviously they will have an organization already created they will have a project also already created so when they give the user id and password to you when they share it these are the screens you will see it and then this particular screen only are going to work so let's have a quick understanding that azure is coming up with these options that is you will have boards so this board it's meant for the tracking of your activities like as i told you right when you do a plan you will have a clear understanding that what are the features this website is going to have how many stories or tasks i'll be using and uh, who will be working on it how long it is going to take in the first month what and all i will make change second month what is the plan so all the plannings and all will be done in this boards only so this we are going to do a deep dive like how you can create a story a bug a task these and all we are going to discuss because when i create a project i didn't explain you like there are different type of projects you can clear uh, agile project scrum cmmi basic project so different options are there so we are going to see it in detail but currently to show you this landing page i was taking you directly here but i will start in a regular process that is organization level itself what are the features we have what are the things you have to look into that and all we will be seeing next thing is this repositories repos we'll call in short so this is the one you will have the complete code management so whatever code you develop you will be keeping in the common repository so i'll be discussing what is repositories and all so that and all i'll tell in the upcoming things then we will push everything in the code and this is the main source for me 
to start my pipeline because I need the code, right? If I have the code only, I can go and create my pipelines. I can go and deploy it in my development environment or SIT environment. So the pipeline is the place where I can create my pipelines, both the pipelines, that is my build pipeline and the release pipeline, CI and CD. So both the things will fall under this. Then we will have the test plans. Then artifacts is the place where I'll keep all the artifact related information. That is my packages and all. I'll be keeping it here. So these are the five main pillars of a Azure DevOps. Okay. Test plan won't be part of your AZ400 certification. So all other things, uh, the first three things on the priority. Test plans and all won't be uh, part of your certifications. We will see it at the high level, like what and all you can do. And this is the main screen. So here only we will do all the activities. Like we will be working on this board, different type of activities you can create. What are the different work items is there? What are the different fields are there? So everything we are going to see it here only. So this is the page I was talking about. So this is what I was trying to say. If you look at this, I have a board. Okay, so this board, I can use it for my project planning. If this board is not there, what I'll be doing, I'll be using a different code tool, okay, defect management tool. Some of you have used Jira, okay. Some other defect management your tool, team is using means you will be using that in your pipeline. And for the repositories, you will be using the Bitbucket, Gate. These are the things that are there. So you have to separately log into those sites, the Bitbucket sites, Git and all, and you will be managing your code and pipelines. So if this Azure pipeline is not there, means what you will use? You would have used Jenkins. So Jenkins is the one. So you have to log into the Jenkins. You have to create the jobs. You have to integrate with your Gate or Bitbucket whatever the third party thinks you it's needed you have to do a separate integration for that and your planning phases also like whichever tracking system you are using in that tracking system you will have all the test cases creation and your test plans your execution results everything you will be keeping it there and for the artifacts related information also there are a lot of open source tools were available and that you will be logging in and you'll be using so some company will say that i have my proprietary artifacts so that one you have to use means that and all in the on premises we are doing so if your company was using this devops model in the on premises they have to jump upon like different urls different websites different providers different vendors different login user id password you have to remember that was the past story but now what has happened is everything in the single page in the single page itself i can track all those things one single login so this login is going to track the complete project management my project deliverable my project execution so until it is available for the end user, it is make sure that everything is automated. And even after that, like during the maintenance phase also, I can automate everything. So that is the reason this Azure DevOps has become famous because they are not restricting you that you have to use this alone. You have to use only our tool alone. No, if you are using a separate third party on-premises thing yes you can very well continue using it we will support you in terms of integration because when i create the cacd pipeline i will show you what are the tools or what are the third party option it is supporting for the integration it is not strictly saying that you have to use azure repo no when you are creating a pipeline if you are the person from git yes you can do it so they are providing that options to us they are not restricting us that you have to use our own tool only so only if you are using azure only we will be supporting they are not giving any such things if you look at this these are the options they are providing if you are using azure repo git fine if you are using bitbucket yes that also you can do if you are maintaining your code in github yes you can very well uh, do the integration that is pipeline creation here and if you're using github enterprise service that also we are okay with it so whatever is famous in the market they are letting you to do the configuration and configuration wise also it will be easy for us that you will be logged so this is how you will get so again i'm saying i'm not into the pipeline class yet because it will take some time i'm just giving an introduction to this 
to this uh, portal alone, this DevOps portal alone. So with a single login, like if you log in, this information can be used for your further uh, uh, pipeline building and all. So this is one thing. And in case if I want to build with uh, my git actions and other things and all also, I can very well do that. Uh, all the configuration by it's all user friendly. And next thing is defining my environments also like how many environments i want what are the different aspects i need everything we can do it here because maintaining servers in different place maintaining details about the server in different place is a challenging role for the infra admin also because he has to remember everything what are the environments i have in each environment that is in development uh, environment how many servers i have 10 servers 20 servers or 30 servers I have to remember everything. So what are the servers used for which purpose? So, so many tracking is needed in the on-premises version. But when you come to this Azure Cloud option, that is Azure DevOps option, you have this uh, flexibility. Again, there is one more option is there, Azure DevOps service and DevOps server. That also I'll be discussing what is the difference between these two because most of the organization, they will go with the cloud version, but there are some rare cases there are some clients will say that I won't come into cloud. For that kind of customers also, Azure is providing an option. So that and all will see it. So you have your pipelines and uh, repository wise also, you can easily do the cloning and like you can easily commit your change. Say for example, in my laptop, I have a folder with the code and that code I can easily commit and you can uh, move it to the Azure DevOps. So with few clicks, you can make your work easy. You are not going to write any separate code for it. That is the main thing here. So you uh, previous thing, I don't want to name the tool because I use the multiple pipelines tools in the market. So those tools, it need a lot of coding from my end. Like uh, we have to write a lot of coding. Okay, you should be comfortable with the scripting. Then only you can use the tool. If you are not the one from the scripting background, you cannot use a pipeline tool, that pipeline tool, because you have to sit and write your code for any communication or like any automations you are doing. Like in, for example, you are doing one simple functional testing and that functional testing you are integrating with Selenium. For that, you have to write a lot of code. You have to write a lot of scripts for it. Communication, connection, password management, everything was a challenging. Uh, when we started our journey, the DevOps journey with that open source tools and all. But now when you move into the cloud versions of this, especially on the Azure DevOps, it's all handy for us. Like when I show the demo, you'll really understand that how easily you can build your pipeline and how you can reuse it. That is the main thing people are moving towards this, right? Once you create everything, once your pipeline is set, then going forward, it is going to be a daily activity that is it is going to run on a daily basis so that is that is the reason we are going to this pipeline right so what is the expectation nowadays everybody is asking if a developer commit the code if they say that my code is okay everything is developed when they commit the code from their machine okay that particular code change should reflect in the website say i have a google website this is my google website and Google, uh, they got a requirement just for a discussion purpose, I'm saying, okay. They got a requirement that instead of this G, they want to show a different shape, just something, or they want some different icons on the right side corner, a new requirement they got it. So the requirement passed to the developer, developer complete the development. When they commit it from their editor, they want the change in the site without any manual intervention, that is, you should not call and inform anybody. You should not ask somebody to log in. Like nowadays, this uh, on-site offshore concept are coming, right? If the uh, developer in India is developing something, means he has to inform to the on-site part. Like most of the time, the infra access and all would be from on-site counterparts only. You have to call. On time, you will call them and say that I completed the important critical deliverable. Please log in and um, deploy it. And they will log in, they will deploy, any error comes, means that time this Indian developer may not be available, means again they have to call and they will ask. So some cycle used to done. So a lot of collaboration was needed. Now, what is the expectation? When the developer commit the code in this local, it should be compiled, it should be deployed in the development environment, a proper testing needs to be done, 
then it has to move to the next environment so approval is needed then a proper testing needs to done in the like sit or uit environment then finally it has to come to the production so this is a live website right so whatever change is asked it should be available to the website without calling anybody without sending any uh, communication things without informing like hey, please be available without saying that everybody should be available in a war room kind of thing no that is the reason of this devops right so everything is automated how these things are automated it is with the help of this devops tools and services especially on the azure you don't need to jump into different tools different services everything is in a single page only okay this is the overview of this uh, azure devops so as it is a day one i was like uh, giving a high level information only we are not doing a deep dive so uh, we got some introduction to devops uh, portal azure devops portal so slowly we'll be understanding on this uh, organization means what what is in a project what is a team so how you can add a member what is a private project what is a public project so board means what are different types of options i have and um, how can i manage my board how can i raise my defects so i, I can create a pipeline if I, pipeline is failed it means whether a defect will be already uh, automatically created a email needs to be sent that is the deployment is completed deployment is failed and the artifacts how we can show so everything we are going to see it in the portal screen only no theoretical uh, uh, discussion alone it is like we will be seeing the portal uh, aspect also so with this i'm ending today's session okay